Welcome to a tutorial once again on the registers and uh, in this continuation tutorial I'll be just completing the two other types of the registers that are there, the basic types. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go straight to the register type number three that is the parallel in and serial out register. Okay, alright, so in this uh, type of register what happens is that the input takes place parallelly while the output uh, appears as a serial data okay so if you might consider looking at the circuit of this particular uh, type of register right so here we are with the circuit diagram of the parallel in and serial out register okay so uh, as I said in this form of register the data is available as a parallel input so let's say uh, we have the data uh, okay one zero zero one as the input okay so the lines A B C and D they all serve as the input lines now looking closely at this circuit you'll find that uh, the these uh, gate assemblies okay or this uh, you know digital uh, gate assembly consisting of two AND gates and an OR gate are present at the inputs to the flip-flop number two three and four okay while that a flip-flop one it doesn't have any kind of such logic circuitry at its input that's the line A okay and we've got another line here uh, referred to as S okay that just determines whether we want to either uh, you know send the data as an input or obtain the output from this kind of a register okay so other than that we have here the clock line okay and all the flip-flops over here are D flip-flops as well alright so uh, let's just describe its operation in a little more detail so as we can see here that we have this 4-bit data 1001 as the parallel input now whenever you provide a logic 0 input to the line S okay then you can see this particular logic 0 would appear at the inputs of the gate G1 okay G2 there you go and G3 so in a way these gates, I mean the G1, G2, and G3 gates are all AND gates that you can see. So if any on, I mean any one of its inputs are at logic zero, then basically the gates G1, G2, and G3 are disabled. Okay. And on the other hand, the output of this NOT gate, let's just call it N over here. The output from this NOT gate is a logic one. And this output of the, I mean the output from the NOT gate N would appear at the inputs of the gate G4 okay five and of course yeah G6 so in a way you can see that the end gates G4 G5 and G6 are enabled meaning that whatever appears on the other input okay that's the lines B C and D respectively to uh, these end gates G4 G5 and G6 respectively would appear at the input of the corresponding flip-flops flip-flop 2 3 and 4 clear okay so now whenever we have this particular uh, data over here and this line S is set to the logic zero level then with the application of a clock pulse whenever one clock pulse arrives over here the data is taken together from all the four lines A through to D into the corresponding flip-flop so after one clock pulse each of the flip-flops so one through to four would actually contain or rather store the data 1101 I mean 1001 okay so here you'll have uh, one appearing at the output of the flip-flop one it's at Q1 and Q2 would be 0 Q3 would be 0 again and Q4 would be at logic 1 clear okay so that's how you take the data as a parallel input now we want to output the data from this kind of a register so as we know as the name says at least that the data output is going to be taking place in the serial fashion so what happens is there whenever you need an output from this kind of a return then you need to keep the line s at the logic one okay so I'm just gonna write it down over here there you go so whenever the line s is set at logic one then you have the gates g1 okay g2 and G3 enabled okay there you go now 
when the gates G1, G2, and G3 are enabled, now we can see that the output of this NOT get N would be a logic zero voltage level. So we have the gates G4, okay, G5, and the G6, of course, set to, I mean, either, I mean, uh, the one of the inputs of the gates G4, the AND gates G4, G5, and G6, respectively, set to logic zero voltage level, which means the gates G4, G5, and G6 are at this point of time disabled, okay? So what happens now? So we can see that the output of flip-flop one, that is the line Q1 would, I mean, is at the log, I mean, is containing the bit one, which is being stored by the flip-flop one. So at the first clock pulse, now we can see that already the LSV, so this was the data we did, uh, you know, input into this kind of register. And now this is, of course, the LSB. And on the other, other hand, this is the MSB. Both are one. So whenever we are having the, the register this way, okay? Now, till now, no clock pulse has arrived, okay? Till that moment, what we have is this sort of a situation. Now, we can see that the LSB is already available at the output line Q4. Now consider the arrival of the clock pulses. Now whenever there are three clock pulses coming in, or rather four of the clock pulses coming in, okay, so then at the end, I mean, uh, at the first clock pulse, the output Q4 is available. So at the output, we get one, which is the LSV, okay. And then on the next clock pulse, this zero okay, available at Q3 would move into the input, uh, I mean, would move into the flip-flop four okay and the flip-flop four at this moment would store the bit d's i mean would store the bit zero over here all right and this way all the bits would just shift towards the right from the left okay so flip-flop four would store zero flip-flop three would store zero again and flip-flop two would instead be storing the msb bit that is one over here right so the situation becomes something like this Right, there you go. So now you can see that flip-flop 2 stores the MSB, flip-flop 3 is storing the bit 0, and flip-flop 4 storing the other bit 0. Okay, and now correspondingly on the arrival of the subsequent clock pulses, all these bits, okay, starting from the LSB, the LSB is already taken out as the output, okay, so the rest of the bits starting, uh, starting from the 0 to the MSB will be available at the output serially okay so this is how this kind of register circuit works okay so each of the bits just transfer themselves towards the right with each subsequent clock okay and that's how the shifting of the bits takes place and we can achieve the serial output okay so after the next clock pulse the msb would get stored in flip-flop number three okay and finally in flip-flop four while the rest of the zeros they are available through the line q4 as output bits and ultimately the msb bit that's one is available as the output serially okay so that's how the parallel in and serial out shift register works. Now next up we got the parallel in parallel out register. Now in this parallel in and parallel out type of uh, register this is probably the circuit and probably the most uh, I mean the simplest circuit of them all. So you can see as the name says data will be taken as input parallelly as well as will be output parallelly. Okay so the input and the output both are available as parallel data. Okay, so let's say you have a 4-bit data, let's say, uh, what what can you have? Okay, let's say 0, 1, 1, 0, okay? So let's say this particular data arrives at the uh, corresponding input lines, that is the A, B, uh, C, and D, so 0, 1, 1, 0, there you go. Or rather, let's just write it a bit uh, to the bottom, okay? 0, 1, 1, 0, there you go. So whenever this particular bit, uh, these bits are available as the input to the uh, register circuit over here as a parallel input uh, data, then on a single clock pulse, each of the flip-flops, one, two, three, and four, all of them, they just store the data within themselves instantaneously, okay? So flip-flop one would store zero, flip-flop two would store one, flip-flop three is storing one, and flip-flop 4 stores 0 again. So this 0 over here would serve as the LSB 
while this zero over here serves as the MSB. Good. So in this case, uh, this is how the data will get stored from flip-flops 1 through to flip-flop 4. Okay? And as soon as the data gets stored in each of the flip-flops, then it is just correspondingly available, you know, almost instantaneously on its output lines, let's say QA through to QD. So QA stores, I mean the output line QA contains a bit 0, QB stores 1, QC stores 1, and, uh, well, it's not, it doesn't, uh, I mean, the output lines, they, they don't store the data, it's just available over there. So QA uh, contains the bit 1, QB, uh, I mean, QA contains a bit 0, QB contains a bit 1, QC contains 1, and QD finally contains z the bit 0. Okay, so now as soon as the data gets stored, as I said, it just instantaneously is available on its corresponding output lines of the corresponding flip-flops. So as soon as you connect your wires to the output lines, you're gonna have your data available to you as a parallel output. Okay, so that's how the parallel in, parallel out register basically works. And uh, now let me just tell you that, well, all these register designs that we've just discussed so far, okay, uh, also I'm talking about the previous tutorial where I just discussed the other two types, okay, so all these uh, register designs have now become obsolete, okay, and that's why we have another type of register design which is more effective, okay, and uh, now that's known as all right, so now in this universal shift register, as I was just talking about over here, now this is the particular circuit diagram of uh, this kind of register. Well, it's an elaborate uh, picture, I know. Well, in order to sum up, I, I won't go into the details of the circuit, how it works and all, but just to give you an idea, well, this is a circuit diagram, and you can see that there are, well, four flip-flops from starting from flip-flop 1 through to flip-flop 4, okay, where flip-flop 1 would contain the LSB bit and flip-flop 4 contains the MSB bit of the 4-bit data being taken as the input to this kind of register. Now you can see over here right at the bottom that there are, uh, you know, four lines for taking a parallel input bit of 4-bit data. Okay, so here you can see that the lines I0 through to I3, they serve as the input lines for the corresponding 4-bit parallel input. And on the other hand, you can see that the lines Q0 through to Q3, they serve as the corresponding output lines for the parallel output of a 4-bit data. Okay, and now you can also see that there are uh, four uh, multiplexers employed over here that max 1 through to max 4 and that there are two select lines S1 and S0. Now with controlling the bit pattern on S1 and S0, you can select each of the multiplexers correspondingly or rather more uh, precisely speaking, you can actually select the lines, okay, that are present on the multiplexer uh, for the input data, okay? So on the left we have one uh, line, okay, where we can basically see that there is a control line known as serial in for shift right, and I mean, yeah, shift right, and on the right we can see another uh, control pin known as the serial in for shift left. So these pins, whenever they are given with, or rather, you know, supplied with the correct input, okay, or whenever they are uh, given a logic one on them, then the corresponding data shift occurs either from the right to left or from the left to right, okay? So in this kind of uh, uh, shift register, basically, you can shift the data from left to right and right to left as well and you can also take in the data uh, as a parallel input and output it parallelly, okay? So the, other than that, other than just parallel input, you can also have the data to be taken in as a serial input and output it serially as well. So, as the name goes, universal shift regi register, okay? So you can basically see how this kind of a register circuit can take in and uh, you know, send the data out as in a parallel format as well as in a serial format. So you can basically see that this kind of a register circuit combines all the capabilities of the different four different variations of the shift registers that we have discussed so far. Okay, so 
well, having said that we just come to the end of this uh, tutorial video and we're gonna catch up with you next in the forthcoming tutorials so till then let's good luck with learning okay bye bye